Welcome to the Once in a Lifetime series. In this video here, we're exploring Ohio, right along the Ohio River. We're starting out in Dayton at two world-class museums. Then we're going straight down to the Ohio River. And end up in the West Virginia State Capitol of Charleston. So sit back, enjoy the ride, and the journey starts right now. And there is downtown Dayton, all the high rises. People driving past me here. <laughs> I take the slow lane. I'm gonna cross over a river. That park, by the time we get there, it should be just opening up if I have this timed out correctly. Uh, at Highway 35, that's how we'll be leaving later in the day. But wait, there's more. There's a second museum. There's also the Air Force National Museum here. 20 acres under roof. So if we have enough time when we get done with this one up here, we're going to hit the second one. Well, I better pay attention. We're getting close to where I got to exit. And it's not that one. It'll be the next exit coming up. This place is called Carolon, Carolyn, Carolon, I think, Park. There it is over there to the right. There's a river right there. Tons of history in Dayton. This goes way back. All of Ohio, all this area. A lot of this stuff dates back into the 1700s even. Okay, we should be making a right here. I'm cheating, I got the phone. <laughs> Phones tell me which way to go. There's their towers, those are chimes up there. It should be the park off to the right. Alright, made it. Here's our first stop back on the road again. Carillon Park. It's supposed to be uh, like an old village, old buildings, then all the Wright Brothers stuff. Wow, nice flower garden, huh? And we should be getting here just in time for them to open up. Got an early start. Want we'll to get as much sightseeing in as we can, plus driving. Wow, this place is nice. All right, we're in. Twelve dollars to come in here. They give you a map. There's guides if you want it. There's a cash register right there. Carillon Historical Park. Wow. They got some bucks in this, huh? Well, Dayton. You know, you read about a bunch of this stuff, but you... Did. Whoa! Look at the bike. Wow. About a gold-plated bike. That must be part of the Wright Brothers stuff. Well, I'm not sure where to start, so we'll just keep wandering. <laughs> There's Wright Brother pictures. Oh, look, that's part of the old wing. 
Well, I read that that plane that they have on display here, hopefully we'll find it, is one of, it's supposed to be parts of the original, whatever you want to call it, aircraft. According to the map, there's a straight ahead. We'll go in there first. Inside stuff. Then we'll head out for the historical park. The Wright Brothers Museum is out back. Oh. That was developed by John by Charles Kettering when he worked for John Patterson. And then Kettering eventually went on to make the self-starter. Huh. And he did that in Well, that nice gentleman really knew this stuff. All about the cash registers. They even brought original buildings, cars, anything and everything Dayton. Even goes back to the gangster days. Art of manufacturing, wow. Hey, Smokey the Bear. Lunar landing, Apollo, they made parts for it. That guy was talking about self-starters. I'm not sure what he was meaning. I'm sure it's something that's manufactured here. It's kind of dark in here, so if the camera gets a little jumpy, I apologize. And I bet, oh yeah, during the World Wars, this had to be a huge place for manufacturing. Looks like the old time uh, calculators and cash registers, old black and white screen computers. Oh, here you go. Here's some of the old time cash registers. You know, that is just artwork, the detail. The metal work and the detail. Them things look brand new, huh? National Cash Register. Now everything's done on a phone. <laughs> there they are working on it right there. Here you go, bootlegging and bandits and badges. Everyone had a steal during the Prohibition days. Once again, just a different time. But they're saving history, good and bad. It's all history. Old baton for police. There's the jail cell. <laughs> but they had some characters uh, in Dayton during their days. Beautiful pictures. This place is extremely well done. If you get a chance, check it out. Carillon Park. Look at the shine on that thing. That thing looks brand new too. Dayton, Ohio paddy wagon. Here's another car. Look at the shine on that color. That just pops. Found a good home in this building. That is cool. Uh an old bootlegging truck. Fake stack of wood where they hid their moonshine. 1919 Ford Model T. Mint condition. Well, 
Oh my goodness, look at the carousel. That's what that guy was talking about up front. He rattled off so much information I couldn't keep up. <laughs> Don't tell him. Wow, look at this thing. That is beautiful. We even got a cash register for a seat. It's definitely got Dayton written all over it. Take a ride right on the carousel. How fun. Little locomotive, and I think that's real. I think that thing runs. Huh. Sure does. HK Porter mo locomotive. Then all the toys, they probably make that here in Dayton too. Yep, toys manufactured here. Uh, to be a kid again, huh? Come to this place. Here you go. Now I know this is made here. Old time ice box. I'll be darned. Cooking stoves, Frigidaire. Made here in Dayton. <laughs> Incredible. Well, what do you say? Let's wander outside, go see that village. Those cash registers are just something to see. Pictures of them making them. All right, now we got some light. That was a dark museum. Hard to film those. And we got flowers. Big garden. Some of the buildings here on the map, they date way back. They've been brought in, restored. This represents a little village here. The train is not working. I guess there's a little train that uh, you can ride around in. And it's closed, and they also said a couple of these buildings out here are being restored. Like that one over there with all the scaffolding. Big beautiful park. You know, it's humid here. I'm still not used to the humidity. I had some of that up in Michigan, but it's a lot more humid here. That must light up at night. Aha, I see a sign. What's it say? Oh, there's a water wheel on the side of that building. That's a mill. I'll be darned. There you go. Back here should be the Wright Brothers. Yep. Sign for their museum. I'm anxious to see that plane. Pardon me? Are you? Arizona. Well, welcome. Thank you. This on this wall is all about their family. And there were actually seven children in the Wright Brothers family. And they had two older brothers, Rushlin, who went out to Kansas after high school and became a farmer, and Lauren, who stayed here, and he was sometimes a bookkeeper for the Wrights. And then we had Wilbur. And then there's a set of twins here that died in infancy. Then we had Orville, and Catherine was the youngest, and they shared the same birthday, and Catherine was the only one that went to college. How be doing? And she came uh, back to Dayton, she went to Oberlin College, came back here and was a teacher, and taught Latin, 
in the high school. And their father, this is a young version, older version, he was a bishop in the United Brethren. They were printers, they were airplane, and they were bicycle builders. And over here we have kind of some samples of their printing. And this was the time of period when, if, when you go across the street, there's a printing, printing place, mm -hmm. and they would have one of those boxes where they'd have to put the individual letters in upside down and backwards. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the printing that they did. This gentleman's from Arizona, oh. and they would glue it to wooden rims, like this. Yeah. And so they're riding bicycles on, you know, gravel, dirt roads, no rim, wooden rims. So the Wrights also had a very lucrative bicycle repair business. Now there's five bicycles that the Wright brothers built that are left in the world, and we have two in this building. Those are not them. I'm sure they're not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the Dayton Sewing Machine Company saw what everybody was doing with bicycles, and they started building bicycles, and they became the Huffy Corporation and Huffy Bicycles. This is their, their office. Mm -hmm. The significance of the typewriter is that they, they knew Dayton didn't have enough back then. And notice again, the smooth, no tread tire, the wooden rim, and it looks very much like our bike. They, they worked on a coaster brake. And then notice the clips. Orville liked to race bicycles. And here are some medals that he won racing. And I always think that would be wonderful advertisement for their bicycle business. He's got these medals that he did. Wilbur preferred to ride in the countryside and he watched the birds and he was like, how do they do it? And the one thing that Wilbur noticed is that the ends of their wings would twist in opposite directions. And that's how he came up with wing warping. <laughs> Over here we have a bicycle that where they would repair bicycles. And just so you know that the bicycle business was what funded their airplane business. They took no money from the government, no money from uh, mentors or sponsors. They wanted to be solely in charge. And then this is their machine shop. <clears throat> and they built bicycles in here, and then they started building kites, and then gliders, and then eventually uh, their airplanes. And this is supposed to be Charlie Taylor, who was a machinist for them. And when it came time for the Wrights to, to need an engine, Charlie Taylor came up with it and built it for them. And they had asked the auto companies to do it, and they wouldn't do it. Well, this is the 1905. Airplane. There it is. And this is the one that they learned really how to fly. It, it this is a replica, right? No, this no? is 80% original. Is it? And um, after Kitty Hawk, they did all of their experiments out here at Huffman Prairie which is out by the Air Force Base, and they did it to save money and to save time. So when uh, Colonel Deeds, who made Carolina Park, he was a friend of Orville's, and he, and he was building this park, asked him if he had something that he could put in it having to do with flight, and Orville tells him, yes, I can get you an airplane. But he had pieces stored all over the place. Now you might want to come up with and so Orville designed this room because he wanted people to be able to look down like you were doing, to see the plane and see the parts of it. <clears throat> but Orville died before it was completed. Wilbur died in 1912 of typhoid fever. Orville died in 1948. He had a heart attack. And because we were here in Dayton, see this rail down here? They used a catapult system to launch it. And they would attach a, a rope to it, and the, cat, the catapults had a 1,600 pound weight that they would drop, and it would shoot the plane into the air. And they'd see the string over his head? Yeah. All right, when it came time to land, he would lift his head, that cut the engine, which is the black thing there, and it came in like a glider. And notice there's no wheels, it's got skids, mm. kind of like it. <laughs> and they're in a cow pasture. Huh. 
and a lot of people want to know how high did they fly, and they were they flew above trees. They weren't at their height; they were at their distance. And to fly it, see the lever is right now. That controlled the rudder in the back. The left hand controls this elevator in the front. And then when I talked about wing warping, mm -hmm. okay, see it's he's on a hip cradle. He's laying down. When it came time to, to adjust the ends of the wings, he would wiggle his hips, and that would twist the ends of the wings to do the wing warping. Spruce, a lot of it is spruce wood because it's lightweight and strong. Here's their patent. It's called for a flying machine. This is a replica, of course. Well, cool. We got the grand tour from that nice lady. What a world of information. Look at this uh, tuxedo that he wore. And they still kept it. We can actually go back. I want to take another look at that plane. We can walk. She said we can go back, get more pictures. But what an amazing feat these guys did. Hauled it clear down to North Carolina because she said there's no winds here in Dayton that would support it. Here you go. This is kind of a once-in-a-lifetime thing. I mean, she said it was 80% original. They had three planes. And this is one of them. 80%. And they even designed the room around it. So people could do what we're doing right now. That's total history. He died young, huh? Not too long after they flew the plane. The other brother kept it going. Well, what's the old saying? Too cool for school? <laughs> this is very cool. Okay, I'm going to try something. I know the GoPro. It's kind of dark in here. I'm going to try my phone and see if I can't get a little better shot of the plane here. There you go. Now you can see it better. There you go. 1905. Single engine. No seat. You just lay on the wing. <laughs> Way you go. History was made right there. Here we go. Wow, that's bright. <laughs> There's your difference. Looks like they're doing some pretty major work down there in their roads. Well, pretty darn cool. I wasn't expecting all this. I didn't know what it was going to be. You know, you read about this stuff. There's a lot of YouTube videos on this. Right, Hall? But the history with the bikes... How they supported it themselves. Seven bucks for a patent. Pretty amazing. What do we got? Cars. The Dayton Sales Company. They got some old timers in there, it looks like. Here you go. Nineteen oh eight Stoddard. Look at the size of this thing. It's a big vehicle. Mm 
My goodness. 1910. Scooters. Made in Dayton. That's a Ford there. Well, they probably made them here too. <laughs> Old tires. Very well done. If you get in this neck of the woods here around Dayton, definitely make this uh, part of your bucket list. They even have the old sales offices with little cash registers in them. Come on in, I'll sell you a car. Those tires and wheels are huge. That's wood, too. Huh. And there's your Hatfield, 1908. Boy, I bet that's a rough riding thing. <laughs> Back then where they have dirt roads. Well, this definitely is like a little mini town all set up. have in here steam engine 1902 generate electricity well let's check her out whoa thing is huge modern technology back then Just this building alone, I mean, uh, serious uh, reconstruction here. Look at the roof in this thing. Pretty new. Smells new in here. Big old gauges. But that thing made some noise when it was all fired up and going. <laughs> Cool. And what's this one? Looks like an old house. All these, they probably hauled them in from who knows where. Deeds Barn. Okay. That looks very new. Now this one has the four pillars. Newcomb House. Now that's cool. For as small as it is with them big pillars. Let's peek inside. Now that couch can't be comfortable. <laughs> a lot of that old antique furniture isn't. Grandfather clock. That mirror seen it someday, but that is some really cool stained color glass on it. The old kitchen. This 
smell fire going. Someone's got a campfire going. I think it's in here. William Morris House. Let's check out William Morris. Fire. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, making some applesauce. Um, yeah, this belonged to a, a farming family. They had 20 acres of farmland uh, in the Centerville area. This house was built in 1815. And um, there were four to five people living in this house. Original house, really? Yep. Mm -hmm. It was moved here from the Centerville area. And uh, this room was divided into three rooms with walls. Uh, we took down the walls when it, was, when it was moved here, but they had a bedroom on that side, a bedroom on that side. And um, you can see where one of the walls once stood, notched out, and the beams there is where the wall once stood. And the other wall went from door to door. And um, the chimney housed two separate flues so that each side could control their own heat. So um, all the other daily living activities happened over here, and the stairs there go up to the loft, which they used mostly for storage. Wow. Um, the hole was just cut out by the park so that people could see up there. So on a cool day, you got the best seat in the house. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Uh-huh. There you go. Have a fire. Make some applesauce. Back in the day. This place is so well done. When I was looking at it online, it, I didn't realize it was this big and this nice. Hey, does anyone know what time it is? <laughs> it's half past the uh, second leaf on the tree. <laughs> wow. That's cool. Can't really read what it says. It's old anyway. Pretty darn cool. Looks like they're really working on this one on the siding, new roof. Preserving history, that's a good thing. And that's the Newcomb Tavern. glad I came here. Well, here we go. I spent a lot of more time here than I thought I would. But you know what? We got to check out that other museum before we leave town. Heading to the United States Air Force Museum. It's supposed to have like 20 acres of planes, everything in there. It's uh, the big one, the biggest uh, air museum probably in the world. Just left that Wright Brothers Museum. Wasn't that cool seeing that old plane? original one. That was impressive.
pretty warm here. Temperatures are heating up. All right, I'm just following Google Maps. We'll be there shortly. Quite a few murals painted here. You see more and more of that. That's cool. All right, this is our road here. Should be getting close. Wright Patterson Air Force Base is out here too. For more information on uh, me and my travels, be sure to check out my website, RVRTV.tv. Sign up for the free newsletter. Got free screensaver downloads. All kinds of cool stuff. Merch, hats, t-shirts, coffee mugs, holidays coming up, do a little Christmas shopping. Even got a cookbook out. Instapot cookbook, coloring books, puzzles now. We're coming out with puzzles. What I'm doing is taking pictures of scenes from this summer's travel and we're turning them into puzzles. Thought that'd be kind of cool. Anyway, it's RVRTV.TV. All that helps support the channel in future travels just like this one. And I appreciate that very much. Alright, we're getting closer. Made it. Yay. Here we are. There's the sign. Cool. And you know what's good about this museum? It's free. No charge to get in. How about that, huh? There's the hangars right there. 20 acres under roof. That's... <laughs> of course, it's government what the heck huh? <laughs> there's your tax dollars at work but this should be cool and free parking too even better should be stuff like this If you read the reviews online, this thing is incredible to see. They got a space shuttle in here. There's uh, one of the Air Force One planes, I think. Uh, well, I don't remember. We'll find out. One of the presidents flew on it. Hundred years celebration. Wow, this place is massive. The closer you get, the bigger it is. Yeah. Well, they have several information counters that will help you if you need assistance. They have motorized carts to get around. Um, pretty impressive, really. There was a security thing you had to go through. So don't bring your weapons in. Military ballooning. Wow. I mean, if you think about it, aviation goes way back. Okay, this is the World War I section. Kind of dark in here. Why do they always make these things so dark? And 
line at Kitty Hawk. What a thrill to be alive back in them days. Experience all that. Really shows how far we've come in just a short amount of time, 100 years. Uniforms back in the day. Wow, look at the drum. Violin. World War One combat. Picture of a soldier in his plane. When you look up, they got planes hanging from everywhere in here. What a massive structure in here. This thing is huge. You could fit a whole town inside this thing. Well, I'm just following uh, the arrows. They give you a map. You definitely get lost in here. This is World War II. The Memphis Bell is supposed to be in here somewhere. We got to find it. That's the one they made that movie out of, that real famous movie. Planes got bigger over time. World War II. All the guns on them. Almost looks like a shark, doesn't it? The front of it. Speaking of which, they painted that one that looks like a shark. That's cool. All the guns sticking out every which way. Oh, there's the Memphis Bell. We made it. Found it. There it is, Memphis Bell and the famous crew. Wasn't it they flew so many missions? And there it is. That's the real deal. Now it's in a museum. American icon. Combat aircraft to museum artifact. Saving history. Like it or not, that is part of our history. My dad was a World War II veteran. All right, well, we still got a long ways to go in here yet. I watched that movie years ago. I don't really remember it all. I know it was a pretty impressive mu movie. Very famous one. A36A Mustang. 
Even the name sounds fast and powerful, huh? <laughs> All right, we'll mosey our way over to another hangar. Okay, all these buildings connect. We're going to go find that Air Force One plane. There's supposed to be a space shuttle somewhere. All the different uniforms. Just everywhere you look. There's their patches. Everywhere you look, there's something to see here. This room looks a little bit about everything. Oh, check out the space suit. You can get behind it. Get a selfie view in a space suit. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, they got a little bit of everything in here. Flight simulators. You can sit in here and land, uh, land on the moon. Going back to the moon. They got missions going back up there again. Different aviation through the years. All right, well, we still got a little ways to go yet. I was checking the map. I actually stopped and asked the guy. <laughs> we got some walking to do yet. Find that Air Force One space shuttle. They got all these separated. Oh, look at that thing. But dis different eras in time, you know, like World War I, World War II, Korean. Look at that thing. <laughs> I'll be darned. That's cool. But this is all different sections. Big bomber there. There's a drone. Look at there. Yay. Drones. A little bit bigger than one I got. Well, I was listening to that uh, Air Force One is the one Kennedy had. So we'll find that. Instead of the guided tours, I always like taking my own. <laughs> RV or TV tour. Look at the paint job on these. That is too cool for school. These things are in mint condition. But I'm sure they're in service at one point. When they come here and get decommissioned. What a place to work. How would you like to work here? 
I bet millions of people have been through here. Let's walk under the wing. They give you pretty good access to a lot of this. Some museums you can't get too close. You can actually touch these things. Even got little seats you can just sit here under a wing. <laughs> Plenty of place to rest. I mean, my legs are getting tired already. A lot of walking. I can see why they have those power carts. I'd like to change that tire. Oh man, that's huge. Landing gear. You can get stuff to eat here, water they sell. They got a big gift shop. We'll see that when we leave. Space gallery, here we go. Yay. We're getting there now. Holy moly, look at these guys. Oh man. <laughs> Need a missile? That's a real deal right there. They built the roof up so they can stand these guys up. My goodness. Those are huge. There's the, the engine to lift that thing off. When I lived in Sacramento years ago, Aerojet used to build these engines, and you could hear them test fire them. That was way back in the 70s and 80s. Rumble the whole town when that thing's fired up. Well, here it is, space shuttle, more rockets. Spaceman hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, there is that shuttle. We can actually go on it. We'll save that for the end before we leave this section. Sitting there and fly the shuttle. There's the ramp. We'll go in there in just a minute. I, I want to walk back. I'm pretty sure that Air Force One is back here. There's the blue and white. I see it. It's back there. Boy, they put it way at the end of all this. All the different planes for the 
politicians to fly in. That looks like for NASA there, huh? Extremely well laid out though. That you don't miss nothing. You just keep walking. There it is. That's the one I guess JFK flew on. Not that big compared to what they are nowadays. So this is back in the early 60s. You can sure tell by the color though, it's Air Force One. Now it's so high security, they probably can't even show them. Who knows, I'm guessing. Yeah, this one isn't as big as I thought it'd be. But John F. Kennedy flew on this thing. They brought his body home in that thing. Looks like we can walk on it too. There's the presidential seal and JFK's picture. This is part of the his legacy and also his tragedy. Well, kind of have to go sideways through there. That's as wide as the hallway. <laughs> okay, we're boarding this thing just like he did back in the day, right here. Part of history. So you go in, tell the pilots, hello, good morning. We're off. Yeah, this is more like a regular airliner. Oh, they got it all partitioned off. There's communications. Talk to Washington, D.C. They got food galley. Pretty simple, huh? Probably seating for his secret service. Got to have an office or something. Boy, this is skinny. Wow. <laughs> they really got you boxed in. There it is. That's probably where he sat. Oh, the white, fo the white phones. That's a hotline. There it is. Total history right here. Who knows what went on there, huh? All the decisions. And whoever else flew with them, well, they, they take press with them, right? Press corps. Probably assistants. Just all seats. Saving history. There's the restrooms. Oh, wow. This is where they flew his casket home. They took out the first four seats right there. We're standing in the same spot. Wow. Well, that was something. That was something. 
Well, we made it through most of the buildings here. We say we'll go uh, walk across that uh, shuttle, see what's inside that thing. There's a baby Air Force One, little jets. Fly all the other politicians around. Who knows who were on these things, huh? Especially back then in the 60s, 50s, 60s, that was totally a different time. They saved these planes. They're right here in Dayton. Oh, definitely. If you if you're up for any kind of this stuff, look at that. There's the Independence. Well, you can get out of this. One. There's another one. I don't think you can get out of the other one. Right, the space shuttle. Pretty big aircraft, though. It's pretty good in size. Here and then the space here, and then the space that will see. There's a satellite. Pretty weird looking. They got a solar panel to power it. That's some big bucks there, I bet. Alright, this is where they flew the space shuttle. It's like a regular aircraft. A lot of people on here. Down here is where they lived. This is where they slept. Not that big, is it? Slept. It's where their living quarters are. I overheard that guy telling that group. You strap yourself to one of them bunks so you don't float around and catch some shut eye. Mid deck. And all this other space is uh, where they carried cargo. Of course, what they do, they built the space station like this. Pretty cool. Yeah, that satellite. Millions of dollars. Now you get internet from space. Good old Starlink. My Starlink works good. One I carry in the band. Well, pretty darn cool. And here's our cafe gift shop. If you're looking for souvenirs from this type of thing, Air Force, you name it, it's here.
well, two big museums in one day. I'm kind of tired. <laughs> that was a ton of walking. Still worth it. How often are you going to get uh, here? I'll probably never come back here and see something like this. I'm glad I did. Like I said earlier, it was on the list. And this is an active uh, Air Force base, too. You could hear the planes when you're inside those hangars. You could hear the planes flying over. Big old rumbling noise. Okay, we got to head for Highway 35. We're going to head down to an RV park for the night. We're going to camp out there. And then tomorrow we're going to start a little journey along the Ohio River. And here we go. 35, it says east, but we're going to actually drop south too. Highway 35, we're heading south, just leaving up in the Dayton area yesterday, wasn't that cool? Those museums, Wright Brothers, the Air Force Museum, that thing was massive, I'm still tired walking all that. If you haven't seen it, check out those videos. But we're heading down to the Ohio River, we're gonna do a little bit of exploring. It is early morning, about 6.15, sun's just getting up. It's supposed to be a hot day, hot and humid today. Should be a low rest area up here. We're gonna stop so I can get the cameras mounted on the outside of the van. Then we can get busy on our day. Here it is, little Highway 160. Should cut us right down into town. Look how they mow the center divide and along the edges of the highways here. You don't, I'm not used to that. You know, in Arizona, everything's desert, rock and dirt, cactus. <laughs> but not here. I bet fall colors, like I said earlier, are just gorgeous here. Yay, made it. Here's our last exit. We're going to take in Ohio. You can actually stay on 35 and go right over the river, but we're taking the scenic route. Okay, we're kind of zigzagging our way down into town. According to the phone, which I'm cheating, I always use Google Maps. <laughs> we're almost there. Gotta make a right here. Yep. Here we go. And I'd say this is town here. 
Ooh, that cop just pulled out. He's got his lights on. Let's say someone's going to get a speeding ticket. It's 25 through here. There they are. <laughs> Oops. I didn't realize it was that I was going that fast. <laughs> well, I hope they just get a warning. Alright, let's see, what should I do first? First thing I need fuel. Then there's supposed to be a frontage street with some old buildings, big park old downtown area we're going to try to find and we'll work our way around there so downtown's to the right not this street next one up There you go, drive your little excavator down the road there. Well, let's see if I can get around them. Yep. Okay, the next street should be the main one. Highway 7? Yes. And Highway 7 is our scenic river byway. We took that a couple years ago up around Steubenville. Oh, look at that right there. There's a gas station. Let me pop in there real quick and top off the tank. Oh, straight ahead. There's the river. Ooh, we made it. All right, this only take a minute. Right down here is diesel. Okay, cool. Let me get some fuel. Actually, I just checked the phone. We're going to take a, a frontage street. Should cut us right up into the old town area. There's the Ohio River. There's our first look at it. Huge, isn't it? Just like the Mississippi. That's a big time uh, river. Okay, this should be a few blocks up here. All these folks have uh, the Ohio River at their back door. What a view. They probably can tell some stories. That river gets way up. It can flood. Well, there's supposed to be like an old tavern building. Old brick. Yeah, some of these buildings are huge. Ooh, I see a storyboard. Well, let's stop here first. Better watch that tree. <laughs> okay, let's go check it.
Charles Holzer, MD. He was a surgeon, World War One. Looks like he was pretty important around here. See what's on the back side here. Looks like same info. Cool. Check out this stone fence here. That's old. That has some dates on it. This looks like it's some kind of art gallery or something. Old brick sidewalk. That building is just mint condition. It's not open. We're going to head downtown anyway. What a cool place. The architecture back then. And they got a little story walk all about the French art. Okay, well, what do you say? We'll head back towards uh, the van, head downtown. It looks right up here, there's another building before we get downtown. The tavern. Parking's a premium here. Uh. The river's right off to the left. I mean, we're following it. We're like, this is it. <laughs> Oop, here it is. Let's stop. Look at this thing. My goodness, that's a lot of bricks. Still standing. Imagine all the people that walked inside this thing. Our House Tavern. Says there, what, 1825? Wow. It's also a museum, but it's only open a couple days a week. And today's not one of them. But think of the hit history. That Lafayette, I think, uh, when I was reading about some of the stuff last night. Lafayette was a general that came to this town during the Revolutionary War. All of this in here dates back into the 1700s, 1800s, George Washington. <laughs> Boy, them guys came back now and seen what it was, huh? Cars and streets. That building almost looks identical. Okay, well. Oh, look at the chimney in that house. Sorry. <laughs> I get caught up in this architecture. Let's go find that park. We'll check out Old Town, downtown.
what a busy street. He <laughs> almost get uh, run over here. I had to really run for the door of the van. <laughs> oh, cool. Look, park. Yay. Here we go. Plenty of parking. There's the river. And I can see Old Town off the right, plus a big old park here. So this will be perfect. And it looks like if I just turn around, I can park on the other side right there. The van's so long, I have to uh, take up two parking places. This will work. Picnic tables, benches. Just sit out here and watch the world go by, huh? Looks like a little boat launch area down there. Straight across, that's West Virginia. That's Ohio State Line. Few leaves dropping off that tree. Tis a season, before you know it. Falls here. How would you like to live here, huh? All these buildings are dated. Probably low businesses or maybe apartments. And it looks like street up here, there's some older buildings. Must be the ones I've seen online. Nice little park. Big gazebo over there. We'll cut back to the park. Ah, it feels good. What a pretty morning here. It's still early. You know me, I always get out early. Water truck is blocking my view. <laughs> there is that three story balcony right across. I'd like to sit up there, watch a parade. Huh? Let's cut across the street a second. Looks like we're kind of at the end of it down here. Busy street here too. Yeah, check out them balconies. Isn't that cool? They even have ceiling fans. So when you're sitting out there, you got a little breeze blowing on you. There's the courtside bar and grill Morning. right downtown. Good. Oh yeah, here's the old buildings. You, you, 
when you look this place up on Google Maps, it, some of the pictures are these buildings. That's actually a Dollar General store, that old brick building. <laughs> oh, man. Why not, huh? Here's our park we can go through. I see a couple storyboards over here. What a neat little town right here on the Ohio River. It's starting to heat up too, that you feel the heat. That's cool. Horse. That's accurate time. 25 to 10. Town clock. <laughs> yeah, these old buildings. Those walls could talk, huh? Arched windows. All the glass in them. That really shows the dates when you see windows like that. All right, what do we have here? Kind of hard to read, low beat up. Talking about the city. City of the Gauls, huh? Huh. A lot of French history here, my goodness. about here you know a lot of the wars civil war revolutionary war a lot of that stuff came through here tons of military history wow those birds Stuff. Very noisy here in the park, huh? Mother Nature. G.C. Murphy Company. This be like a department store, maybe? Well, let's do this. We'll walk down towards the end. Then we'll cut back through the park. One more look. Very colorful very restored. All these buildings are in perfect shape. They kept it going through the years. That's good. Saving history. That looks like there's a restaurant or something up there. A big open deck on that roof. That's cool. Probably get a really good view of the river from up there. Well, I'd say this is the main little section of their historic downtown. Looks like it goes a little farther. When we drive out of here, I'll drive down through. So we won't miss it. Truthfully, I wasn't expecting all this. I didn't think it would be this big. 
this old and this big. Well, I kind of knew old when you look at this stuff online, but it sure is different when you see it in person. There's RV parks around, campgrounds. You're along the Ohio River. It's both sides, West Virginia and Ohio. That Highway 7 that's running through here is that scenic byway. Folks out walking their dogs. This must be like a little place you can probably got music maybe, huh? For all their town events. Well, let's cut back over towards the van and the river. Looks like a veterans memorial. We'll have to check that. It's so cool. Most of these small towns really honor their veterans, and they should. They actually have a wall of names here. Different wars. Just different times of history. There's Korean, World War II, Vietnam, probably local people that served. Very well done. Very powerful, isn't it? Well, I see more uh, plaques or storyboards across the street here. Right along the Ohio River. Yeah, that looks as big as the Mississippi, doesn't it? A lot of barge traffic. I think they got the lock and dam system along here, too. I'm sure flooding's an issue. Wow, what is this? It's huge, whatever it is. I'll be darned. Rock or concrete? 1790. Wow. That's here forever, huh? Navigation systems. 50 year anniversary back in 1979. Here you go. The landing of the Welsh here. 1818. Six families settled here from Baltimore, which helped start all this community. So it's on the back of the sign. They always have more on the back. It's kind of a long reach, though. <laughs> Or 
more history about the Welsh settling here. 1830s and 1840s, several hundred more families. See, they had their economic times back then too. This part of life, huh? You know that silver bridge collapsed here. I think it was in the 60s or maybe 70s. Might have been 60s. Let's see what's on the other side of this one. You can feel falls coming in the air about the county, more about the town, more about the French settlers. Just how the river, I mean this is a highway, the rivers are highways back then for trade, everything. Yeah, definitely feel falls coming in the air. be cool to take a boat down to Ohio, wouldn't it? They probably got their uh, little paddle cruise boats, I'm sure. I have to check that one day. That's a huge parking lot down there for fishing boats. Public access, got a swing. Like I said earlier, you can just sit up here and watch the world go by. Probably watch the boats, the barges go by. talk about history and historic this little town has it all been here forever I'm sure there's Native American Indian settlements way before the settlers once again that Ohio River that was a highway it was back eons what a pretty little town though There's mighty West Virginia. We're heading there next. As soon as we leave here. Well, I'm going to drive down that main drag, which is Highway 7. We got about two, three miles to get out of town before we can get down to the bridge. Mount Pleasant, West Virginia will be next. Another extremely old historic place. I just love those balconies. That would be so cool just to sit up there in the evening and just watch everything. Then a dollar store that's in an old brick building. That's got to be a first. Normally they're in those uh, little buildings that all look the same. I've never seen one like that. There's the Colony Movie Theater.
probably post office, courthouse. Busy little place, very colorful, very colorful and unique. For more information on my travels, be sure to check out my website, rvrtv.tv. There you can sign up for my free newsletter, putting it out twice a month on the 5th and the 20th. Also, I got a merch store, all kinds of cool stuff, coffee mugs, t-shirts, hats. Holidays are coming up, make cool little gifts. Also, I got a cookbook out, Instapot cookbook, coloring books, and all kinds of stuff. Once again, it's rvrtv.tv, which helps support the channel and future travel videos just like this one. I appreciate it all. Okay, we're not too much farther down to the bridge. Then we'll cut on over to West Virginia. Right here is where we started. That's where I got the fuel. That's where we came in town. And looks like we keep following Highway 7. Make it right here. Wow, this is a long stretch. Oh, Bob Evans. Haven't seen one of those restaurants forever. Here we go. We're going to go across the Silver Memorial Bridge. Yeah, that bridge collapsed. I remember that when I was uh, younger, a long time ago. A lot of people lost their lives on that. Okay, we're actually getting right back on Highway 35, the road we were on earlier when we were coming into this area. See, you got to take the back roads, go check out these small historic towns, just like what we did. Alright, this is Highway 35. We're heading to West Virginia today. Gonna do a little bit of exploring. Welcome to West Virginia. We're gonna be in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. What a perfect day, nice and warm, a little bit humid, not bad. We're going to take this Highway 2 over to Point Pleasant. Once we explore around here, then we're going to start trucking uh, west. There's supposed to be a uh, state park right along the river, right where the two rivers meet. 
supposed to be a mansion there, all kinds of cool stuff, ton of history, old town, a moth man statue. <laughs> That'll be fun. So I got a little time to kill, why not? Let's check her out. And I think I'm following the phone here, so we're just going to cut up a few streets. Then we'll head over to downtown. There's a walkway along a flood wall. There's a lot of murals. We'll try to find those. But this town dates way back. Everything along the Ohio River here, most of it dates back into like 1700s which is incredible in my mind. Okay, looks like I can make a left here. All the flowers on the light pole, small town USA, small town West Virginia, along the river. That's a narrow building there, huh? See boards over the, some of the windows. There's the movie theater. And here we go, one way street. All kinds of little shops. We'll walk this, I'll come back. I wanna go down to that fort first, that museum. It's supposed to be down at the end of the this street, at the very end. Cool looking mural. Wow, that's a big old hotel. Bet it's haunted. Oh, there's the Mothman statue. I see it off the left. We'll come back for that. of the phone here. We just go right down to dead ends into the park. Everything's old here, including me, huh? <laughs> now this building on the left, that was the old museum, but it caught fire. So they, they're in the process of rebuilding it somewhere else. Wow, look at this flood wall. Big old iron gate. Here it is. Made it. Well, what is park here? Old brick road. Lavia Simpson, born March 1862, was a publisher. Wow. She died in 1937. There's a big old memorial there. I'll check that. And there's that, uh, they call it a mansion, that house back there. What's this one? 1774. Thousands of troops defeated uh, in the tribes known as Cornstalk. Huh. And there's a plaque about the mansion house. And it's still here, huh? And more about the War 1812, my goodness. Everything that happened in our country uh, passed through here. Amazing. All right, well, what do you say? Let's go for a little walk. This is a state park. Closes at night. That flood wall, we'll check that thing, too. That is 
massive. Well, all the rivers. Yeah, look at that thing. That looks, what, at least 15, 16 feet high. These rivers can flood. All right, what's this one? Kind of hard to read. Battle of Point Pleasant, Lord Dunmore's War. That's what this memorial's about. My goodness. Look at the size of this thing. That must be Lord Dunmore himself there, huh? Hardly any wind today. It's just beautiful here. And these plaques here. They're the names of the soldiers and people that fought the battles here. What a prime location, right on the corner of the two rivers. This one says, the magazine. What a view though, you got both bridges. You know, that original Silver Bridge collapsed. That was extremely tragic. A lot of people uh, lost their life. But there's a Silver Memorial Bridge we just crossed and also this green one. Well, what do you say? That little mansion's open. It's supposed to be like a little museum. See what they got in there. If these walls could talk, oh my goodness. All this dates back centuries. Was built in 1796. Goodness. China, there's three floors, there's even a basement in here. We can go in all of them. There's a memorial outside for Ann Bailey. Old fireplace, a lot of this stuff's the old original architecture. And a letter from Daniel Boone. Now that's something. All kinds of old relics. Probably from the original building. I'm sure this has been restored. Here it is, back in 19... There's this building right here. Wow. Holy moly. Pretty cool. Well, what do you say? Let's go up. Crunch.
crunchy old steps, huh? You could never sneak around at night in here. <laughs> Old bedrooms. How they dressed back in the day. Look at there. There's your sewing machine. <laughs> this is pretty incredible that this thing's even still standing. I'm sure they've worked it. But. Nice lady downstairs kind of gives you a lay of the land here too but what happened wash basin with the pitcher she said a lot of these artifacts in here are original little baby crib what good craftsmanship with woodworking back in the day Wow. It's a huge, what do they call those, spindles for sewing? Yeah. Cool looking chairs. are some steep steps. Bunch of artifacts up here. Wow. I like them old bottles. You know, you see a lot on uh, YouTube, guys. Metal detecting, find a lot of relics. Newspaper articles, pictures. Civil War, Confederate money. That's something. History can't change it. A lot of local history here, too. Artwork play. I'm amazed how much they have in this building. Black and white photos. Probably families that have had this stuff donated it to the museum. This whole wood floor. It's held up all these years, so it still must be good. But boy, does it creak. Probably some ghosts that run around here in the evenings, huh? They got fans going up here, so it's really not too hot. Wow. James R. Hall, John Hall.
and look at that dress and rifles those are in great condition even the woodwork of the cabinet that is detailed the hair down the middle that's the style back in the day all the ladies wore hats I didn't even notice these pictures coming up All those people back in the day. That's that memorial outside, probably their dedication for it or a ceremony. Gotta be a little fit to <laughs> do these stairs here. Old style furniture, you gotta love it. This is so well done. I see a lot of museums, but this thing is just packed full. been shorter back in them days. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of bend to get in there. Oh man. Oops. Almost fell over the chair. Hmm. Yeah, they looked like a lot of good concrete work back in those days too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we think it's primitive, but back in them days it was modern. Huh? Yeah, that, that stuff, stuff wasn't here in those days. No. That's something they've done. I don't think that was... Well, this is the basement. There's a rolling pin for you. <laughs> These doorways are short. You got to duck to get through them. Well, pretty cool. We say we head outside. I think we've covered most of this.
pretty darn cool. Yeah, a lot bigger on the inside than it looks. Huh? Oh, you got a lot of stuff, and that's original, real yeah. artifacts. Huh? Yeah. Does it flood here? I see the flood wall. No, it hasn't flooded here for years. Okay. It used to quite a bit back yeah. before they built the flood wall, and then we have a system of locks and dams. And. Uh, Okay, they don't use the flood walls anymore, according to that lady. My goodness, but here's what I always think when I come to these places is people 100, 200, 300 years ago or however stood here and had the same view. <laughs> the exact same view. Except for the bridges and the mowed grass. <laughs> That's always incredible. History. Saving history. Imagine sitting out here back in the day. Maybe watch a steamship go by. Barges. What's this? French plate. Washed out Point Pleasant. Washed out at Point Pleasant, 1849. Well, what's this one? More names of soldiers from the Revolutionary War. There's an old anchor that belonged to a naval clipper ship. They pulled it out of the river. Discovered it. We gotta check out this flood wall though. That is a massive amount of concrete to build one of those. Even though they don't use it. There's a memorial. Oh, that brochure in the museum. Ann Bailey. Memorial for her. This park isn't that big. Maybe a couple acres. I sure got a lot packed into it. But here's that wall. Look at that guy. Huge. thickness of it where they used to slide steel doors down there's the neighborhood how'd you like to have that for a fence kind of ruins the view you don't get the view of the river okay what do you say we'll go walk a little bit of downtown go find that mothman statue That's a post office up here. Always cool that these towns restore these old buildings. Yeah, that's the post office. Big old pillars. They don't make them like that anymore, do they? Step to go up through there.
look at this 30, 30 Main Street. Around 1900, this building was put up. Mothman, here you go. Here's the Mothman statue. Yeah, that old hotel. That dates way back, I bet. All right, here you go, Mothman. I guess kids were out in the country and this guy showed up. The legend of Mothman. Pretty scary looking, isn't he? <laughs> the town clock accurate time low after 11 still remnants of the old brick street there's the mothman gift shop museum so you can go ahead and buy uh, mothman <laughs> probably cool around halloween huh Old antique shop. Need a plow. I got barrels. Nice old wood bench you can sit on. Pepsi Cola machine. The Mason Jar Antique and Craft Mall. Pepsi Cola. Old cooler for it. And little restaurants. Jeweler. for mail pouch chewing tobacco. That's been there a long time, all faded out. You can tell where there used to be a building here, huh? Got tore down. Well, what do you say? Let's cut over the river. Go find those murals. Murals here. Point Pleasant tribute to the river. Yeah, that flood wall is impressive. All right, let's check her out. Wow, look at all these. All the old paddle wheel ships went through here. Oh, I bet. Along the Ohio River. Like a major highway for everyone here. Look at these murals, wow. Very detailed. They weather well, it's very colorful still. Wonder when they uh, painted all these.
Just different scenes from back in the times. British troops, the Indians, settlers. going down this way too. Ooh, here you go. Got some boats. Like an amphitheater for music. That's Ohio, straight across the river. Train bridge there. This town has a, just a little bit of everything in it. What a good use for that uh, wall. Can't really tear it down, can you? Put massive murals all the way along there. This must be for like tourists, maybe uh, private boats. Take it for a ride up and down the river. And we got a couple statues here. Chief Cornstalk. Very cool. I'm glad I stopped here. If you get a chance, make sure you check out Point Pleasant, West Virginia. This place is scenic, historic. This downright cool. Too cool for school. <laughs> Well, mosey back towards the van. I spotted a place that I want to stop on the way out of town. It's a few miles from here, actually. Yeah, I love those pillars. Big old concrete. Hope they keep that building forever, but we're going to stop and get lunch. <laughs> If I can find it. A few miles from here, we're going to head uh, pretty much south and west. In the morning, going to go to Charleston. Heck, they got TVs playing there. Thought we'd check out the capital in Charleston, and we're trucking straight west. Got to keep the pace going. Right back across the river. We're going to take this highway two down a ways. Could actually jump back on that 35, but you know, that's just like a four lane. It's pretty much like an interstate four lane highway. Don't see much. We'll stay on two south down towards Huntington. I'm actually, I uh, got a reservation at an RV park down this direction too. Spend night. We'll hit Charleston tomorrow. Check out that state capitol. Why not? We're here. And we just keep going straight here.
For more information on my travels, be sure to check out my website, rvrtv.tv. There you can sign up for my free newsletter. I put one out twice a month, on the 5th and the 20th of every month. There's also a merch store, got all kinds of cool stuff, hats, t-shirts, coffee mugs. Also a cookbook, coloring books, and other cool things. Once again, it's RVRTV.TV. It helps support the channel and future videos just like this one. And I appreciate it very much. Okay, I spotted this yesterday when I was researching the area a little bit. And just the name of this place, we got to stop. And normally I don't stop buy food on the road but usually I eat in the van and cook but I can't resist this one <laughs> you're gonna see in just a minute here it is here welcome to hillbilly hot dogs <laughs> we have to get a hillbilly hot dog while we're in West Virginia don't you think let's check it out busy road. Hillbilly hot dogs, here you go. There's the outhouse. A lot of these pictures were online. I mean, this is uh, pretty famous around here. There's the Hillbilly gas station, <laughs> your outhouse. They got a bunch of old school buses here. Looks like dining cars. Outdoor seating. Isn't this something here? <laughs> There's one of the school buses. Looks like you order inside. I'll go in in a minute. Stickers everywhere. I ought to put up a RV or TV sticker, huh? Work of art. Even has its own wedding chapel so you can get married right here at Hillbilly Hot Dogs. Well, I just ordered a Hillbilly Hot Dog. It should be ready any minute now. The lady at the counter, if you uh, tip a dollar, they sing you a song. <laughs> they got very uh, historic dining area. <laughs> you can sign your name anywhere you want. Patches, memorabilia, even their own little YouTube channel. That's what's playing up there. Isn't that cool? And right along the mighty Ohio River. There's Ohio straight across the river. Pretty and green. Hilly. For the Appalachians here. But just gorgeous. 
What a nice drive. Definitely a must see, must do. Busy road, this highway too, it's pretty busy, but that's okay. You can stop and get you a hillbilly hot dog. Here it is, that looks like hillbilly heartburn to me. What do you think? Chili and onions on that thing. Oh my goodness. Well, let's taste it. Well, my goodness, that was so good. <laughs> Might regret it later, but who knows? Gotta get you a hillbilly hot dog if you come down this highway too. We're along the Ohio River. What a great day, what a great trip. Got to see all kinds of cool stuff. Heading into Charleston, West Virginia, the state capital. This is Interstate 64. We're going to cut through town. Crossing over the Kanawha River. I hope I pronounced that correct. Thing is huge. We seen that up at uh, Point Pleasant as well. It's early morning. There's a state museum down here, state capitol. It's Saturday, it should be open. So we should have access to it. Sun's just coming up. You know me, we gotta get out here early. Very cool, here's our exit coming up. Yay, there's the Capitol Dome, I see it. Very cool. Yeah, I wouldn't want to come down here on a weekday. Saturday's perfect. All right, let's get in there. We'll check her out. Well, here we go. Looks like their war memorial. The Capitol won't, the building itself won't open for almost two hours at 10. Wow, that's impressive, huh? And then the museum opens in an hour. So we'll just kind of wander around. There's a all kinds of, they had part of the street blocked off. There's some kind of a marathon running event going. But I was able to park where the state workers park because it's Saturday. It's open to anyone. Look at all those names. Wow. Just all the different wars. World War One. My goodness. A lot of lives, huh? Korean War. They honor their vets here. That's a good thing. I love West Virginia. It is such a pretty place. It really is. Well, I kind of looked on the phone here. I got the phone map out. 
walking around. This complex is huge. We can get over to the main street, see the front of the Capitol building along the river. Here's another one honoring female veterans. Very good. Cool. Folks are encouraging the runners. All kind of runners going. I can't run no more. <laughs> I can walk fast. How's that? Wow, look at this one. Homeland Family Patriot. This is their gold medal. The silhouette of someone saluting. Patriot sacrifice their gold medal memorial. That is absolutely stunning how it shines. Huh? Very cool. That building right there is a museum, but it's not open. Jackie, can I say, what are you doing over there? Flowers look good. <laughs> I thought the, I thought that was Another the memorial. <laughs> We're going to take the long way around. I don't want to cut through their race there. Cool. Here's our first sign. This is where I pulled in. They had part of the street blocked off. The cops did because they're race. Constructed of buff Indiana limestone and lined with imperial dandy marble. Well, I can't wait to get on the inside of this thing. Considered one of the world's superb example of Italian Renaissance architecture. Right here in West Virginia. Yeah, there's, you can park almost anywhere because it's a Saturday. Okay, let's keep trucking. Old buildings, Charleston's an old, old place. Tons of history here. Okay, I just talked to one of the nice cops here. That race will be going for a while, but you can walk all over the place. The museum will be open in about a little over a half hour, so timing's perfect. Here's some history. First capital is in Wheeling, then the Charleston, and back to Wheeling. It was destroyed by fire, and then this one's been here since 1921. So that's, what, 102 years? And they got this entire street blocked off. Yay. No traffic. <laughs> it's like a massive sidewalk. There's the governor's mansion. Big old pillars on the front. 
There's that river. Wow, flowers, brick walkway. Pretty impressive. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, a little lay of the land here. Capitol, the mansion, museum. I spotted some storyboards across the street by the river. I think I'll cut over there. Boy, they got statues everywhere. Place is cool. Glad I came down here. I almost didn't. It was a last minute decision. Well, since they got the entire street blocked off, they knew we wanted to sightsee today. <laughs> Those poor runners, man, they are, they are going by. The 35th star. Storyboard's kind of beat up. Showing the older capitals. We'll probably see some of that in the museum. Wow, there are mansions up on that hill. This place is plush. Well, we'll just walk along the river in front of the West Virginia State Capitol. This is actually a U.S. highway. Of According to that sign, U.S. Highway 60, you know, 60 goes all the way through cross country, through Quartzsite. And... You can walk right down to the river. Probably in the old days, boats pulled up, people got off. Come right here to the capital. Wow, pretty cool. Yeah, up on top, those are mansions up there. My goodness. And here's the view I wanted. Golden domed West Virginia State Capitol. What that one sign since nineteen twenty one? That'll be fun when we go inside that thing. Let's see what this sign says. Talking about Abraham Lincoln. A little history about Lincoln. He got 2,000 votes from Virginia, which is now West Virginia. And this county was named in his honor, Lincoln County. Same story on this side. Well, let's go check out the front of this and we'll make our way back towards the museum. One more sign over here. We got to see it. And this one 
Same as the one out front. Okay. Charleston back. Yeah, they moved it between Wheeling and Charleston. Wow. Took 10 years to build that thing. 21 to 31. I always like coming and checking the capitals when I can. This one kind of reminds me of the one up in South Dakota. Here's another statue of Lincoln. A lot of history here about him. Pretty impressive. I like the gold dome. See what it looks like from the inside later. Got their little fountains going. I'm sure they got security all over this place. They're watching me filming them. Well, they need to nowadays, huh? Except for the runners, we kind of have the place to ourselves right now. Especially with that street being blocked off. Those flowers are definitely colorful, huh? Okay, it's right now 9.03, so time we get there, that museum should be open. Well, here it is. This is the West Virginia State Museum. Kind of looking forward to this. Let's go check her out. Well, it's all downstairs. It's free. Open every day. Look at the size of this room, huh? All their quilts. And the nice young lady said, head on downstairs. For the people of West Virginia, the West Virginia State Museum, 2009. Wow, that's an old U.S. flag. All the stars on it. There's an escalator here we got to take. And it looks like it might be getting a little dark in here, so I'll film what I can. There's the seal of West Virginia. Okay, let's head on down. They got the governor giving a welcome message. Recording. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Sorry. Well, we'll just kind of browse, see what we can find in here. Just part of the West Virginia history. 
Saving history, they got to. You know, these state museums get all the good stuff too. It's a self-guided tour. There's some of the pictures way back. One of the old Capitol buildings. Wow. We'll drive through downtown when we leave. I already looked at that on the maps. Looks like more artifacts. Butterfly collections. Bugs. <laughs> Ooh, that's a cool picture. Another one of the old Capitol. Part of the geology here. You know, mining, my goodness, coal, huh? There's all kinds of mining in the Appalachians and West Virginia. You know, when we think of a hundred or two years, a long time, I mean, a lot of the stuff goes back millions. Pretty good samples. They got each little room here kind of dated. You go through a timeline of West Virginia. Yeah, the Indians and Native Americans 3,000 years ago. A little replica of a hut. Oh, wow, look at this. All the fossils in here. Petroglyphs. Huh. Big chunk of rock. Well, it's dark, so I'm just hitting the lighted areas that I can. Settling the land. First settlers here. Acquiring the land. Back in them days, you just said, hey, oh, Daniel Boone. He's got a ton of history here, doesn't he? We've seen quite a bit of him up there at uh, Point Pleasant, that letter. And there he is. Hard to see, but there's another letter from him. His own writing. There it is, Daniel Boone. Old swords from back in the day. Pistols, artifacts. Couple of rifles. 
That wood and that rifle is really something. It's got to be original. The markings in it. I don't know if the camera's picking it up or not. replica of an old cabin there's a sewing machine for you get out the good china have dinner that's when people you sit together and eat maps way back they were fairly accurate weren't they you know we think of this as primitive back in the day it was modern That's what I love about these hi history museums. <laughs> More rifles from back in the day. Harper's Ferry Armory. Silhouette of a troops in a tent. Yeah, look how dark it is. I keep saying that, but I'm sorry. Just hard to see down here. Cool old cannon, huh? There is so much history. In the Virginia's all east, back east. Clear back of what, George Washington, and way back when the country first started. All the battles, Civil War, the Battle of Droop Mountain. Got a picture of it. Story after story in here of all the people from the past. There you go, telephone operator, listening to your call. Can I connect you? <laughs> when I was a kid, we had a party line. I remember on the phone, used to get in trouble for listening in on calls. <laughs> There's a washer for you. Here you go. Now that would have been me with that camera right there. Finally, it's some light. Old money back in the day. They got a little bit of everything here. If you get a chance, if you're in this area, definitely check out this museum. Just bring a flashlight. <laughs> Yay. Railroad history, I'm sure. Building railroads through the Appalachians, hauling the coal. Wow, look at that wreck. Yikes.
big old wheel from a, probably a paddle wheeler, huh? All the river history. Got the Ohio River, that other river that we crossed coming into Charleston. That wheel is huge. Oh goodness, here's about the Capitol. The Capitol burns. More West Virginia history. There's the shovels for the for the ceremony to break ground for the new one. A little more on Lincoln. And there's some of the older pictures of the Capitol buildings. Very unique architecture back in those days. Nowadays, everything's just square and big. Wow, people working in the mines, they're getting sick, black long, breathing in all that coal dust. Back in those days, the safety probably wasn't as good. There's an old mining car. Beautiful stained glass work. That's an art form on its own, isn't it? like pottery, very fine glassware. Stuff is gorgeous. And this must be their artist. Cameo Glass, Kelsey Murphy. At least we got light in this room, huh? Nice and bright. There's even stuff hanging from the ceiling. Wow, cool banjo. Music history in the Virginias. Heck yeah, bluegrass. More pottery, glassware back in the day. These state museums always have the best. Oh, what do we got here? Marbles. I'll be darned. Remember playing with marbles when you were a kid? And look at all the marbles. Wow. Now that's cool. Well, this is our music section, banjos, mandolins, local music artists. They were famous back in their day, the costumes they wore and suits. Doc Williams, Doc and Chicky Williams. I think we made it to the end. We need to go over the, check out the inside of the Capitol. It's easily open by now. 
10 years later. Very, very well done. Thank you for touring the Western Huge building. I mean, we walked around quite a bit. That was quite a little journey down through there. It's interesting how they, uh, like the marbles, you know, all the war and states and capital stuff, but the marbles, bottle glass, making uh, bottles. That Kelsey, that artist with the beautiful uh, stained glass and vase, glassware. They just got more history hanging everywhere. More about the capital. Oh, the bridge collapse. Yeah, that silver bridge. Very tragic. That was up in Point Pleasant. Okay, we're going to go visit the state capitol on the inside. Just opened up. Got to go through security and then we'll get in there and check it out. Alright, we're all in. Very cool security guards. Very friendly, very informative. There's no one working uh, the information booth up here, but you can get everything from the security guards, pamphlets, everything. And look at the white marble in here. Here you go. Welcome to the West Virginia State Capitol. One of the pictures of the old ones. Wow. Marble staircase. Marble walls, <laughs> marble floors. My goodness. When did, what did that sign say? Built in what, 21 through 31 they completed it. The portraits of past governors. All the deals made by politicians. Just a different world, different way of life. I could never be one. Oh my goodness, look at this. Here's where the dome is. Kind of a kiosk thing there. And oh wow, here you go. Check it out. Very, very impressive. That is way up there. Gold lamps. You know, it's cool you can get in these buildings on the weekends. A lot of the first ladies, I think, they have a uh, hand in decorating these uh, capitals, don't they? My goodness, there is marble everywhere. This really reminds me of the South Dakota one that was all white marble. Makes it positive, makes it bright and positive. Some of the capitals you go are all dingy and dark. Not this one. Well, 
we got to go up the stairs. Got to climb some marble steps. Here's their information booth where you can get... The security guard was telling me about... You can just pick up brochures for free. Gives you some of the history. But during the week, someone would be working in here. Give you info. We got gift shop. What do you say? Let's climb a set of these marble stairs. <laughs> We're going to go up and vote on something. The echo in here. You get a bunch of people talking in here. It'd just be roaring, huh? My goodness, that ceiling. This is some very well done architecture. That one sign, what, what wasn't it? Uh, Italian marble or something. The first one we've seen outside. I'd like to come to work and the, your boss says, hey, got to get up there and change a light bulb. Oh, man. <laughs> Says no re-entry without access card. Oh, there's the... We were down a level. We were just out there. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. There's the river. We were outside a while ago. So there's a lower level. This level here is ground level for the river. Pretty cool. Didn't realize that. Just stay in here and people watch all day. I'm sure a lot of visitors every year come through here, and they should. It's historic. It's part of history. This great state of West Virginia. I really like West Virginia. Just a pretty place. People are very friendly here, too. Old time elevators, doorways, famous politicians. Pretty darn cool. I'm really glad I came here today. Like I said earlier, it was 50-50. Uh, Didn't know if I'd... Because I kind of had to double back to come into Charleston. kinds of artwork hanging all over the place. Let's peek through the door here. Jim Justice, governor. Must be where he gives his briefings, uh, all kinds of chairs, big old chandelier. So they got to repaint his name, the go new governor's name, every time they have an election. That must be him there with his family. Well, thanks for letting me visit. Pretty cool capital you got.
Well, let's go cruise through Charleston on our way out of here. There's that war memorial. That was cool. We'll just cut through town. I could have jumped back on the interstate here. We'll just cut a little bit of town, check it out on our way out of here. Then we'll pick up uh, I-64 on the other side. I think we go through an old town a little farther up. I was kind of looking at it last night on the maps. Definitely one old city. Everyone's got a lawn, trees. Pretty place. For more information on my travels, be sure to check out my website, rbrtv.tv. There you can sign up for my newsletter. I put one out twice a month on the 5th and 20th of every month now. There you get info on upcoming travels, got free downloadable puzzles, and also you can get access to uh, my merch store. Got cool merch, coffee mugs, hats, shirts cookbook got my own instapot cookbook coloring books which helps support the channel and future travels just like right here in Charleston West Virginia what a cool place old and historic once again it's rvertv.tv a few big buildings off the left. I think we're about a block off the main drag. It's all one way, so. We'll go this way. According to the phone here, we should get into a little bit of an old town area. Did it heat up? It is getting warm and humid. I'm still not used to the humidity. Stadium Cinemas. They probably got art centers down here. I'm sure other museums. But I really wanted to go to that state museum. I think that was cool. The only downside for trying to capture it in video was it was dark, but it should turn out okay. I'll go up a little farther. I didn't want to jump on the freeway there. I think this is it. Big old mural. This should be part of the older part of Charleston. We're right on the river. I mean, we are right there. River's off to the left. Yeah, some old buildings, huh? Big old church. If these walls could talk, huh? Yeah, 
and Highway 60 going home in October we'll pick up little parts of 60 probably cutting across maybe when once we get in uh, leave Texas and get in New Mexico and all that from here I got to start really trucking west Thank you for watching this once in a lifetime video from Dayton clear down here to Charleston. What an epic four day trip. Definitely one for the memory books. I won't forget it. If you ever get a chance, make sure you get down here, especially along the Ohio River. I definitely would come back here and do some more exploring. Stay tuned for more once in a lifetime video series on RVR TV. Thanks for watching.